Okay, so we don't get that overreach. Hello, everyone, again. It is quite an honor and joy to be here as a representative of Al-Auda, the Palestine Right to Return Coalition, an organization fully dedicated to the Palestinian refugee right of return to their ancestral homeland, Palestine. Special thanks to the energetic organizers for having me here today and everyone, is, everyone else involved putting this event together and also special thanks to you, the attendees, for being here together. Also special thanks to Cleveland Peace Action. Thank you for having this. I understand it's not easy to have an event like this. Um, and it is always, I believe, delightful to have genuine Palestinian speakers, not always. Uh, for some reason, us Palestinians always have other people speaking for us. So this is an important step. If you look uh, across the world, even at the, uh, I'm not sure at the Geneva Conventions, but you know, when they have Taba talks and you know, Arafat wasn't allowed to attend and that person wasn't allowed to attend, so it is important to hear the Palestinian narrative. Even if you disagree with it, it is very important to hear us because we are the Palestinians. And I'm sure you can agree that anyone of any ethnicity should represent themselves. To the love of Palestine and enormous support is evident throughout the world. There is a deep connection between the Palestinians and all people, all justice and seekers of truth. Some of you are here for support and some do not consider this work as simply solidarity measure but consider it as your cause and your duty, while some here are simply to learn and seek the truth, or simply to hear the other side of the story. Please know that the Palestinians are grateful for this. We appreciate every opportunity of engagement and every opportunity of sharing our passion for Palestine with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Palestine is part and parcel of the Arab world, therefore, in fact, an Arab cause that is clearly reflected on our national flag. Our Palestinian flag represents not only Arab nationalism, but has become the symbol of revolution global-wide, and we take pride in that. Palestine was always Arab, and will, make, will remain proudly Arab, no matter what others call it for us. It will always be rightfully Palestine, and irrefutably the land of our ancestors for centuries. For us, it was Palestine and would continue to be Palestine. Let's see if this works all right. Palestine, a land with the people. Imagine that. Dr. Nahida explained that um, earlier as well. The Palestinian Nakba, also known as the Palestinian Catastrophe, was well orchestrated long before it occurred in 1948, which caused the dispossession and ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians from their beloved ancestral villages in order to make way for a so-called Jewish homeland. The story often fantasized by Zionists is that Palestine was a land without a people, for a people without a land. The fantasy does not explain the theft, massacres, mass forced expulsions, the original inhabitants of the land, the Palestinians, who were unquestionably the indigenous people of the land. One well-known example that ignited the Nakba, or the Palestinian catastrophe, was the village of Dar Yassin, in which I am a direct descendant of. My father and grandparents were survivors of that massacre at Dar Yassin that occurred on April 9, 1948. My father, Fakhri Muhammad Qasim Hamida, was a survivor of that massacre at Dar Yassin on April 9, 1948. Like most Palestinian refugees, his greatest wish since his forced expulsion in 1948 was to one day be able to return to his village in Palestine. Unfortunately, 53 years later, on February 7, 2001, while driving himself to his regular doctor visit, he passed away at an Israeli checkpoint near Ramallah. My father was receiving kidney, kidney dialysis treatment on a regular basis at the Ramallah hospital. Due to the delay at the Israeli checkpoint that day, he could not get through it in time. He went into cardiac arrest, passed away inside his vehicle, bearing New York license plates. Despite all efforts trying to get through the checkpoint, there were witnesses who explained this to the family, including the Palestinian ambulance medics and hospital officials in Ramallah. The family flew to Palestine the next day for the burial procedures and met with the hospital administration. My dad was laid to rest in Ramallah, away from his village of Dar Yassin, which lies occupied to foreigners of the land till this very day. His dream was to return 
and the return was now passed on to his children, the descendants of, the, of his beloved village, the Yassin. For centuries, the village of Dariusin, three miles west of Jerusalem, was a peaceful place in Palestine. The word there means monastery. In the early 18th century, around <coughs> 1742, a nomadic Arab Bedouin and his family settled in this village. His name was Sheikh Muhammad al Yasin. The village was named after Sheikh Muhammad al Yasin and ever known, and ever since known as Deir Yasin, the place of Yasin or the monastery of Yassin. The massacre at Deir Yassin, April 9, 1948. In 1948, Zionist preparations for the massacre at Deir Yassin had begun. The terrorist Zionist Stern Gang put forward a proposal to massacre the residents of the village in order to show the Arabs what happens when the Irgun and Stern Gangs unite in their operations. One of the aims of the attack was to break Arab morale and create panic throughout Palestine. Taking Deir Yassin was also militarily strategic to Zionist plans to empty Palestine of its indigenous inhabitants. In the early morning of April 9, 1948, the peaceful village of Deir Yassin was attacked and its inhabitants massacred by the terror Zionist and Ergun Stern gangs led by Menachem Begin and Ben Zuon Cohen respectively. Now uh, you guys know Menachem Begin later became the Prime Minister. That is something that a lot of people know. And if you don't, you should. The Ergun and Stern gangs butchered everyone in their way. Men, women, and some were pregnant. And children to empty the entire village. The massacre was designed to terrify Arabs beyond the village of Deir Yassin so that they would run away. To terrify Arabs across the region and thus be driven out of their homes. This explains why the Zionist death squad did not bury them women and children that they killed. They left dead bodies to be seen and frighten other Palestinian Arabs. Those who were still alive were taken by the Zionist terrorist gangs and loaded into trucks with their hands tied and eyes blindfolded. They were paraded through the streets of Jerusalem while other Zionists applauded and celebrated the dehumanization of the Palestinian Arabs. After our people's humiliation through the streets of Jerusalem, they were taken back to Deir Yassin and line up against the wall and systematically sprayed with gunfire and killed. Fifty-three orphan children were literally dumped along the walls of the old city of Jerusalem where they were found by 